Hey guys, welcome back to uh, our podcast here across your garage where we are trying to help you build a firm foundation in fitness, food, and finances. Today we've got a journey with um, Alan Lindsay, and before that we're in Black Raffle Coffee. So if you hear the awesome sounds of coffee percolating, people talking, and us drinking, which slurping is totally, it. yeah, we yep. slurp it down, it's totally fine. That's what we do. So um, again, I'm Andy, and I'm the owner of Crossroad Garage and a couple other businesses, some that still exist and some that don't. And I think that's just part of uh, the entrepreneurial journey. You just, you exactly. to, what do they call it, fail forward? Um, so, uh, Alan, give me um, your thoughts on the workout we just did. Wow. Yeah, that, that one was kind of tough. Um, looks a classic example of it. Looks good in the whiteboard. Um, five rounds of 50 double unders and 10 um, power snatches. Yep. Um, 50 minute time cap. Well, the, the kicker was it wasn't necessarily that. It was, what was the weight on the bar? 135 for RX. <laughs> so, so everyone dropped that pretty fast. <laughs> and so uh, this is going to be a weird podcast in the sense that we sat down for lunch to talk about having doing a podcast, mm -hmm. and then we just talked for like two or three hours or we, something. We forgot to turn anything on. <laughs> we did, and so. I will probably like throw things in there and you may go, wait, we already talked about that. That's just for these guys to hear sort of the fun we had before. But so um, you can probably tell by Alan's accent that he originates from Texas. So what was your journey like from Texas over to Georgia? Oh, I thought it was a, te <laughs> it was a Texas, Scotland. Yes. <laughs> so Scotland where they wear kilts and you actually own a kilt. That's great. Absolutely. I'm going to get married in it in June. And you ha weren't you in a wedding in a kilt recently or did you... You got a new kilt, that's what it was. Yeah, well, actually, I had to get my kilt resized for the first time since I was 21. And we're working on going back the other way, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what's funny is it's a very popular uh, birthday present for 21-year-old guys. Um, and I've in, made, in, in, Scotland. In, in Scotland. Because in America, that. that doesn't happen as well. everywhere else. <laughs> so, of course, my waist size at 21 is slightly different than my waist size at 50. Though at 32 inches or 31 inches, I feel that, I'm doing okay. That is really good. But yeah. I was 28 <laughs> inches at, uh, at, at 21. So, yeah, it was getting a bit snug around Yeah, there. that's good. So, um, I'm, I'm in this unique position where um, I, I know there's real known, like, it doesn't really matter. But it, I find it weird that, like, my length when I go buy jeans is 30, but my waist is 32. I'm like, really? I don't feel like that's like how it is. And then conversely, when I was, so we went shopping with my son Levi and we were at Levi's buying uh, Levi's. stuff at the, yeah, the, at the outlet. And um, he's shopping for the exact opposite, 32, 30. He's just like looking at me like awkward eyes. I'm like, dude, <laughs> just wait. <laughs> um, so how did you end up from Scotland over here to the States and then in this lovely town of Woodstock-ish, Georgia. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's been a bit of a journey. So I um, uh, went to uh, college in, in Scotland, University of Strathclyde, uh, first five years working for a software company in Birmingham, England, not Alabama. Which is funny that so most Americans don't even know that there's a Birmingham, England. So yeah. anything that you see new something, it was probably like New Jersey, it's because... That, they all came from the UK. There's a jersey over there. Exactly. Birmingham, it's over there, actually. Exactly. And right. they even say, they say Birmingham or something, right? Or, Birmingham. They've yeah. got a very funny accent, they for have, sure. It's fascinating. So my wife's British, and we go over there and see people. And you can go from county to county, and their accents are different. I'm like, that is... Oh, the, the difference between just a city 30, 20 miles apart, and the accents are completely different, like unintelligible. Yeah. Uh, you got to remember how small the UK is. It's tiny. I still get Georgia blown and South away. Carolina. That's how big it is. Yeah. And there's like 70 million people. Yeah. Blown away by how many people and how small the place is. So you started in Scotland and went to went to England for five years, and then uh, it was funny. I had um, been in the same company five years, decided to settle down, bought a house in Birmingham, very happy with it, and then two months later, I got the offer to move to the US. Uh, and help start the U.S. office for this software company, oh. and that was obviously here. What was in the Atlanta. software doing? So, a company was called Mercy Software. They did demand planning for manufacturers. You know, forecasting what they're going to sell, how much they need to make, how much safety stock and inventory to hold. So, so basically, the crystal ball. The crystal ball, <laughs> and we had General Motors and Johnson Johnson, the Heinz and its customers. Great, great place. So, did you guys? I'm gonna man. I'm gonna segue out of this because mm -hmm. I love uh, this technology. I mean, if you so. I'm going to make a podcast on this. Kids, if you're listening, parents, if you're listening, make your kids listen to this part. If you want to do well and make yourself money, go into the stuff that people don't want to do because it's hard, like computer science. It's absolutely. Make, do software tech. or engineering. Engineering, IT, tech, obviously go into uh, statistics, AI, right. machine oh, learning. Uh, so did you, guys use, modeling. did you guys use machine learning? We, uh, yes, back then it was just called statistical forecasting and predictive <laughs> modeling. I mean, AI and ML has been around for a long time. Right. Uh, just we named it differently. So we used um, 
Bayesian analysis of time series. Oh yeah, wow. actually, I, I actually know what that is, or I knew what that was from Georgia Tech. I couldn't <laughs> tell you now, but. So it's a very sophisticated algorithm that's still used to this day at, at General Motors. So um, that was, moving to the Atlanta allowed me to travel a lot with work okay. to exotic places like Flint, Michigan, <laughs> like um, Appleby, Wisconsin, uh, that is very exotic. Uh, that, that's, that was Kimberly Clark, uh, Piscataway, New Jersey for Johnson & Johnson, just the sexiest places. We never managed to find customers in Miami, <laughs> right. in Austin, in LA. I don't know no. why. <laughs> so um, I didn't work for uh, like Johnson Johnson, Procter & Gamble, but when I was at Georgia Tech, they um, courted us heavily. And mm-hmm. they all talked about the golden handcuffs. So they would look for these like bright, hardworking kids and then shackle you with money. Yep. <laughs> so you would, I'm like, I'm okay with that shackle. <laughs> Now, I guess if you're in a manufacturing environment, there's no work at home because you have to go to the plant. Uh, for but, sure. That was back in the days where you went into the office and then you travel to the customer site and I would travel there on a, on a Sunday night, work through until Thursday yeah. night and you know do that week after week after week after week, yeah. just traveling all the time. Um, when did it hit you that, uh-oh, what am I doing? Uh, With all the travel anyway. Well, I mean, I'm a Delta Million Miler, so oh. I... I that's, Used to be in the 80s, we could be proud of that. But now we're like, man, we shouldn't be, we should be like I, living our life. I've been platinum, Delta platinum since I came to the U.S. 20 years ago. Damn. <laughs> now, granted, COVID, they kept on just rolling it over and over and over. Right. And somehow I made platinum again this year. Yeah. Um, but I do look back and go, that was a lot of travel. But again, I, I, I did a lot of international travel, South America, Asia, right. all over Europe, Australia. So I was lucky enough that I got to see a lot of places and as a single guy, that's the time to do it. Sure. Um, and traveling alone, you can do it. Now, the, the problem is, I don't like to travel. I'm sick and tired of traveling. Yeah. I want to be places. Right. But the traveling, I'm like, meh. Like, like you did, you went to, you on vacation recently. That's a good travel. Yeah, so. <clears throat> Not going to, like, Flint, Michigan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so, week. So, so the trip I took last uh, October, that was to Cancun. So there two hour go. flight, that's yeah. fantastic. And I'm heading back to Scotland uh, end of February to help sort out my, my wedding in June. And yeah, there's that. nothing like um, the perfect weather that Scotland will have right now in February. I, I mean, they've gone through their worst storm in, in decades uh, yeah. in the UK. Like, the whole country was under a storm watch. Wow. So um, the, what does Billy Connolly say about um, bad weather? Uh, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothes. That's it. Pick, pick yeah. something better to wear. Lots so of raincoats. We would, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> when I went over to England to visit uh, Verity's family... I think the first time we went was in December, so we were on college break, and we just we stayed out there for like a month. So it was really cool to see how people lived, yeah. and everyone always had a raincoat with them handy, ready to go because it's going to rain at some point. It's going to rain at some point, yeah. So it was uh, it was interesting, but um, so that got you over to here. What got you? So you're Woodstock ish. Yeah, so I <clears throat> spent most of my time in uh, Atlanta, either in Buckhead or in uh, Inman Park. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so uh, my first wife and I bought a, a real fixer-upper in, in just off West Paces. <clears throat> that would take two years to do it up. Uh, took ten, and got divorced at the end of it. Yeah. Now that wasn't the only reason. But, <laughs> and I'm very amicable with my ex. But e- even our plan was Buckhead was getting so expensive, and yeah. we were going to move to the Burbs. We had two, we got two kids, I don't know, twelve and ten, and you know, together we always we we're always going to live close together, and we were looking around. You know the, the the Great Atlanta area. What is a cost-effective place that is nice, good schools, great people, and you know you start looking at Roswell. Yes, yeah, so expensive. Yes. Everywhere up Alpharetta, so expensive. So expensive. Everywhere up 85, just so far away from everywhere. Um, and Vinings was one place that actually my um, ex found, and it was really the downtown Woodstock area because. She wanted to have somewhere that had like a town center. Okay. Like a, it was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. And downtown Woodstock is really nice. It's a yeah. great place and, and Woodstock is near as well. Well, it's grown up a lot too. So you still have the, like, you, if you get off of 92, you yeah. just go to Arnold Mill, it's like farmland again. Exactly. But if you want to, I don't know, get to Outback or whatever, it's just down the street. Well, and, and, and there are, there's nice restaurants. I mean, there's a, and right. there's a nice, uh, you know, the, yeah, the, Prime the, the walking down, down, down exactly. Down Woodstock. We love Ips. Um, we've got the, um, Reformation there. Just yeah. a real friendly place and a big park out there. So send the Reformation kids Brewery is a great place for beer and fun. Exactly. And you can send the kids over to the park on the other side of the street. So Oh yeah, there you go. Hey, that, go babysit a, yourself. Technically it's a family trip out. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna drink some beer. So they also just so they do a, a game night there. So I would like 
for one time eventually to get the entire jit work. A portion of them gym to show up, uh, drink beer and play games. So, That'd be brilliant. Yeah, yeah b- board games. It's um, if you're under the age of 20, you may not know what a board game is. You have to go look that up. But um, so interestingly, we were we lived down in uh, off Delk Road in Marietta, mm-hmm. and um, and it was like 1999. We're like, hey, if we buy a house, maybe they lose their mortgage in Y2K and we get a house for free. Of course, that would never happen. But right, these are you know two the young you stu- think about yeah, it, yeah. stupid kids. Like, hey, let's risk it. So we bought our house like in October of 99. And we were looking in uh, Kennesaw and it was a Pulte neighborhood. And that same developer was developing up here in Woodstock. So we're like, yeah, let's go up there and look. Well, I've never heard of Woodstock. Yep. And the, the house you could buy was like down there was like a tiny little townhome thing for maybe like 200,000. And then you could buy a, an actual house in a cul-de-sac lot with like space it was like two, two, maybe 2,100 square feet. I mean, it was a pretty decent nice starter house, home. Yeah. And it was like 150,000. I'm like, um, yeah, we'll be taking that. So just, I mean, we didn't have to, like, we could live anywhere we wanted to live. So uh, it was pretty crazy. Hold on one second. We're going to, it's Hug 2023. Bring it in. Here we go. How you doing? How's your foot? Hey, doing well. How are you? Good. Doing a little podcasting. Nice. <laughs> um, Tim's in my small group uh, on Tuesday mornings. Um, so, yeah, so we ended up here randomly in Woodstock and, uh, it was equidistant between where I worked back when you had offices mm-hmm. and where Verity worked. So she could jump on the interstate and I would just drive through 92. So And there was no that? traffic up here back then? That, no, for sure. Now it's got a bit great, great. Yeah. So I think if I had to do that same drive, I would jump over to the side and uh, like go down Arnold Mill or something else yep, and just stay off of 92. <laughs> okay. So software. Why software? So, uh, I mean, I did computer science in uh, university, and, and what's funny is the way I figured out that that's what I wanted to do at college, because I really didn't know, was I got a university perspective that had all the courses, and I started at astronomy and all the way through to zoology and just scored all the ones I didn't want to do. Yeah. And I, I ended up with uh, chemistry, geology, and some version of computer science. And my older brother was at the same university already, and he knew chemists and geologists, and he says, Oh, those are really hard courses. Don't do those. Yes. So I did computer science. <laughs> That's funny. So I have told my kids similar. Um, Olivia picked uh, uh, chemical engineering. I was like, look, at Georgia Tech, everyone said the hardest degree ever is chemical engineering. So are you sure you want to do that? I don't know if it's true at every school, but I think in engineering, like that chemical stuff is like Because tough. chemistry in high school is really easy. Yeah. And then and you think, well, I can do that. I got 100% in my, all of my exams. But then you go to university, it's completely different. It is very different, yeah. So, so you're, you're going to find a, you know, a, a good engineering degree, but why put yourself through something that's difficult? Do computer science, do triple yeah. E, do, do engineering, and you will find an interesting, well-paid job for the right. rest of your life. Yeah, now, uh, I would like caveat that with, if you can do it, great, do it. And pick the hardest thing. So my sister is a uh, geologist. And she is now getting her doctor in, I guess, geology. I don't know, doctor in something. And sorry, uh, Justine, if you're listening, I don't know what it is, but I will ask you later. And uh, um, so when she was looking, she's like, she really loves the outdoors and working in, like, Mm off-site. She's like, I think I'm really digging the idea of being a park ranger or getting a geology degree and going that route. And so my advice to her and to all you kids out there is do the harder thing because a geologist can always become a park ranger. But a park ranger will never be a geologist. And let's go back to school. <laughs> it's a true statement, but it also is the reason that you go to college and get a degree is to have some sort of job or career. Yeah. So you do have to think pragmatically about make sure that it earns enough that you'll be comfortable in the way that you want to live. Right. If you're happy earning 50 grand a year and you have great, go for that. No. But if you want to earn more, make sure you've got options. The only purpose of a degree, yes, you should have fun. Yeah. You make great friends but it's to set yourself for the rest of your life from a financial point of view. That's right. And so have you ever heard the, the guy, oh, what does he call it? He, he says he, he's got this speech he does in a book that he wrote. It's called The Talk About Money. So it's not mm-hmm. like the birds and the bees talk. It's, but he'll tell kids, like, when you get that first real big paycheck, the first one where you're like, well, wow, that's a lot of money, live on 70%. Take 30% and put it somewhere else. Make 70% your 100%, and you'll always be ahead of the game. Yep. So when you start off, if you've set your... Uh, your, uh, what do they call it, your uh, living, standard of living, at that level, you'll be okay with it. But if you spend all of it, that's what you're going to do. Yeah. yeah. So just as a backdrop, I've got a buddy, um, 
whose kid just graduated, not just, a couple years ago graduated from UGA with a computer science degree. Oh, great. Who knew that they even had computer science? I didn't. And my son's going there right now for that. I'm like, oh, who knew? And I think they did that double dog thing where you get an undergrad and a graduate degree at the same time. Right. But I think his first job coming out was something like $90,000. Coming out of college at $90,000. That's crazy. What? That's insane. Computer science. So anyway, yeah, guys, go do, go do yourself a favor. Um, if you've got a problem that money can solve, it's not really a problem. So yeah. go get yourself some of that money. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. then how did you end up finding CrossFit? So you're, you're already pretty fit. So you came into this. So that's, that, that, is a, that is a good story. So I, I've been quite lucky in that I've never been a, I've always been naturally skinny. Um, probably very skinny. But, uh, funny you're also that, like 6'4 like or something? Yeah, 6'2", it's, uh, it's getting down to 6'1", it's a point <laughs> Shrink, six yeah. foot. Um, <laughs> funny aside story, um, I played college American football. Really? Now, I was at University of Strathclyde, which I think high school kids would have beaten us. But we did, we, we played the whole thing, I was a wide receiver and we loved playing it. Um, and we would go and go to the gym and try to build muscle. So you're playing go, American football in Scotland? In Scotland, Okay, yeah. that's, so, take note, he's not saying football as in soccer it's american football, american football which is i mean i didn't even know they would do that over there it's just pretty it, cool it, yeah it was because they still have that it's all affiliated with the british american football league it's affiliated with the nfl so it's all about board and there's a lot of fun to play the quality was shockingly poor i'm so i'm not trying to say that but um i mean we'll go to the, the gym twice a week and we'll go to all you can eat pizza buffets oh, yeah. and i was i could not put weight on i was you know 170 pounds still six two just so skinny and so I, i've been lucky throughout my life um, they've all been quite slim. You know, I'd go to the gym, I would run a bit, but never really was able to put on, never thought about putting on a lot of muscle. And then, surprise, surprise, um, when I was divorced and was back into the dating scene at mid 40s, and this was at COVID, um, my, I'd got six month garden leave on my job. I had all this spare time because I didn't have the kids for, for one week of the, every other week. Yeah. So for a little bit of mental health as well, I just went to the gym. There was one right around the corner from me and I hit that up and I had a coach twice a week and I ate and I got up to 200 pounds. Yeah. At, you know, within my you know, mid to late 40s. And I did that two years before I then came to CrossFit, which okay. is why I came to CrossFit quite strong already. Um, and I actually lost muscle with CrossFit. That's not a bad thing, guys, um, because then I got my cardio and my right. speed down and CrossFit's more about strength than muscle size. Right. Um, that is a true statement. So, yeah, so if you think, so we have a lot of girls, so I'm going to pause it. This is a good story. So I've got, um, usually ladies will say, I don't want to do CrossFit because it'll make me bulky. Mm -hmm. CrossFit will not make you bulky. I've been doing this for 17 years and never has a person walking down the streets of Woodstock, go, damn, Andy, you must be on steroids, you're so, so bulky. No, I'm unusually strong for a guy who doesn't look like he should be that strong, but yeah. it, it makes you more athletic and makes you who you are. So it's really hard for especially ladies to get bulky unless they have an unusual amount of testosterone, either naturally or maybe they're helping themselves. You also have but to eat a ton. You have to, you have eat, to eat a ton. For protein to, or to, muscles to, to grab it. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, it's a good point to make. Muscles pull in protein. So just eating lots of protein isn't going to add any more muscle to you. You've got to exercise your muscles and then that protein gets pulled in. And again, if you don't eat that high protein diet, your muscles aren't going to grow. But it is, that is a good point. Uh, and, and I got into CrossFit um, through my, um, my, my now fiance. Um, she's been doing it for 12 years. She was a CrossFit coach uh, during the downturn 2011 when she lost her job. Um, and all of her friends and my friends are all, CrossFit is just a daily part of their life. Yes. It's not even a big thing. It's just all of our friends do so, CrossFit regularly. It's not a cult, but man, it could be. <laughs> it, it could be. Uh, but it's a, that's how she met all of her friends. Yeah. Uh, she gets her workout done and you know everyone's in their you know, mid forties, fifties, and you know, they look great and they're fit right. and they're healthy and they, they still drink and they still eat burgers, but during the week they think about what they're going to eat and they're right. conscious about what they put in their mouth, but you know, they'll still go out and lash out and have a great Saturday night. So it's a nice balance that you right. can do, work out when you can, uh, eat well, generally eat well, but you know, don't have a miserable life right. uh, and eat lettuce and black beans all the time. That's right. It's not so um, uh, a good friend. Well, a friend of the family said this and I love it. 
This isn't a dress rehearsal. We get one shot, right? So enjoy it. Don't do stupid stuff. Or if you're going to do stupid stuff, don't do it too often. Like you can eat entertainment. McDonald's is entertainment. It's not really food. And you can do that. But if you do that every day, that's just, you're asking for trouble. Right? Exactly. Um, and we had this discussion when we were over at, where were we at? Canyons? Is that where we ate? Yeah. Yes, yeah, right. Um, great burger, by the way. It is very good. They have good food. <laughs> and uh, so if you're in Woodstock, go to Canyons. It's downtown. It's great. Uh, <clears throat> there is a level of participation or of pushing that you can get to. So sometimes in CrossFit, you get the, like some people get the mentality of, I'm going to the games, right? That's, that's okay. And then some people get down the other side of it. I can never do what they're doing. I should just leave. And both of those are wrong mentalities. Basically, if you literally, if, and I, I've said this before, I'll say it right now. If you go to the gym, if you come to our gym four days a week, do what the coach says, log your results, and put some attention, hire Laura for one month. If you aren't fitter a year from now than you are today, I'll give you your money back. I'll yeah. double your money back. There's just no way to not become fitter. And you're going to gain those skills. I got a guy the other day. He's like, I never want to climb the rope. I'm like, okay. And then that was like three months ago. And then we were working out next to each other. And he said, you know what? I think I'd like your help with her. Learn how to climb that rope. I'm like, there you go. Right? You, you gain this confidence. And it doesn't have to be like the other day we did pistols. I don't do pistols. Pistols are a one-legged squat. I, and they're I, stupid. Yeah, I would. If I needed to, I would use both my legs. So I don't really do pistols. Like there are some movements I kind of like shy away from, um, uh, like the uh, GHD sit-ups. I just don't like those. I'll do regular sit-ups. But um, so you don't have to do everything. But you will find yourself if you work on it. You'll gain strength. You'll gain endurance. You'll gain coordination. You'll gain, uh, gain agility. Hey, you might even gain some pickleball talent. <laughs> well, exactly. And, and just to follow up on that point, I think the. Well, a couple of points. One is one of the nice things about CrossFit is you say you do it regularly four or five times a week, but this isn't a two and a half hour workout. No. They are short, intensive, you know, lift heavy or lift heavy fast. And so you get in and out in an hour. And everyone's busy, but in an hour you can arrive and leave within an hour and you're done. Uh, the second thing is, and this is what I didn't fully appreciate when I first started, because I came quite strong, I could lift heavy. And then there was a point that I started hurting myself because I wasn't learning the skills of CrossFit. And we don't talk enough about, I think, the skills that you learn about how to lift, but then how to do a rope climb, which includes your, your grip, um, how to do a pull-up. These are all things that um, are useful in life, but I think you feel a sense of accomplishment in doing them. Right. And what I've seen when I've seen that, especially there are younger guys who don't feel or look particularly strong, or women who clearly don't initially feel comfortable working out, when you when they start like um, uh, back squatting a hundred pounds, I mean the, the look in their faces oh, yeah. of like personal achievement, the confidence to get out of that for women and uh, you know feel that they're strong. Like I'm strong. They right. don't look any different, but they look they feel strong. Right. Uh, is is fantastic, but it's a personal journey. Don't ever compare yourself to other people. You need to get into your head of this is about how you can improve yourself. Work with your coach and what your goals are and then just continue to see that improvement. And yes, it's nice to see what other people are doing, but if you're not doing that as a competition. You're doing that more as a way of um, incentivizing or encouraging yourself because you want to work with other people, other like-minded people as well around that. So just why the classes are a lot of fun. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm all in on that. I think uh, the, the in, in the similar vein of thought with the back squat, I, one of the times that I really enjoy is when, um, especially the ladies will do this, they'll get the bar above their head, and I'm like, yes, and now drop it. So we have rubber rubber, <laughs> rubber uh, weights and rubber floor, but who, who drops bars? Well, we do, and that's why we have, because you're going to get tired of entering, you have to drop the bar. Yeah. You're like, yeah, just drop it, and they're like, it's above my head, and I drop the bar, and you see them smile, like, hey, that was pretty cool. I'm like, you just lifted that weight above your head, yes, and drop the bar, everything's okay, you're going to pick it back up, we're going to do it again. And mm -hmm. just to see the smile, like, hey, and the eyes, like, I can do this. I mean, yeah, you can. It just takes a little bit of time and attention. Yep. Literally, the secret is just show up and on anything. If you want to do well, like I've told my kids, um, uh, my dad said when I was going through college, he's like, Andy, when you get a job, 99% of it is just showing up. And I, was, I went to be a sales guy. So he's like, show up to your sales, whatever it is. You're going to find that a lot of those guys don't even show up. And it was true. I mean, I'm like, how can people not do their job, right? Same thing with this. You, at CrossFit, just show up. You get better at American football or soccer, you show up, go to practice, right? Put a little bit of attention on it. I think the other part that's interesting is uh, it's fun. So 
It is true. We're not going to necessarily compete. So you and I aren't looking at each other, staring each other down, and like kicking sand at each other and like ready to throw this, right? But I did look at your bar. I'm like, how much is he doing? I'm like, I can't do that much. So, okay, I'm, I'm already off kilter, but I'm not going to go slower than he's going, right? So like, I'll do that with Joe. Like he's going to do more weight. I'm like, okay, but I'm going to try to stay just a little bit in front, even though I'm going lighter, right? So yeah. it does that, that, that. It encourages yes. yourself to push yourself a little bit That's without it. being an open competition. Right. Without being an a-hole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, on the flip side, we played uh, some pickleball, and that's an open competition because we have two people on a side, and we're trying to crush each other. Oh, I was just smashing the ball in your <laughs> face. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's been fun. So, were you there uh, last Saturday? You missed no, last no, Saturday. No, I missed yeah. last Saturday. So, we had, um, man, we had more people. I think we had, like, maybe 11 or 12. And um, so, that's, you know, you only put four on the court at a time, so then we're rotating. And people had to sit out, and people were like, I don't want to sit out. I'm like, I know, but it's fair to. So it was like, this is interesting. We're having that much fun. And the crazy thing is, we played for an hour and a half, and nobody was out of breath. And most of the people were in the class just beforehand. Mm -hmm. And that's like, to me, the culmination, like, why do I do this? Because I want to be an active dad, an active granddad. Well, for sure, that's the second thing is, you know, we've both turned 50 last year. And while I would never be, say, as a, I, I'm, I'm as fit as I was when I was 21 because you're naturally fit when you're that young. I'm certainly stronger. And I do um, Spartan races as a way of sort of checking out that I'm still strong and got enough cardio do to, to do those. And you do your adventure races um, because I do want to, you know, maintain my fitness as I grow older. And I think there's no other way of uh, longevity than strength training, a uh, bit of cardio, eating well, and, you know, you'll, you'll live long. Yeah. And, and, and it's true. So it, it's, it's fascinating for me at this age. <clears throat> I'm in a small group of guys who are in their 50s-ish. Most of my friends are 50-ish because, I mean, I'm 50, right? Mm -hmm. And you start to see a real uh, divergence of... Uh, I, so the CDC has it on their website that the average age for an American is 76. Or the average lifespan, I guess. Not average age. So average lifespan. So half the people you know will be dead when you're 76. And you can see the uh, difference in your friends. Like, it, and it doesn't take much, just do something. And you can turn back the clock. You just have to do something. Can agree more. Yeah. Move, I don't even care what the movement is. Like I was at, um, I did a podcast with uh, Sue Becker. She owns the Bread Beckers up in, um, just north of Woodstock. Uh, they make their own bread and they help people, whatever. It's pretty cool stuff. I don't usually eat bread, but if I do, it's because I made it and it's theirs. <laughs> but, um, uh, we were talking about it and I was on her podcast and I had a bunch of her people emailing in uh, saying, hey, what do I need to do? I'm not really interested in CrossFit or whatever. I'm like, take the mailbox challenge. Just walk like 10 mailboxes down, turn around, come back. If that was okay tomorrow, do 11, right? Yeah. Keep going until you're like, hey, this is kind of tough. And then stay there until it's not. And then go some more, right? It doesn't have to be. W walking is a fantastic one. Especially oh, yeah. in Woodstock when there's a lot of areas have got some big hills. Um, do you count steps? Uh, I do have a, uh, I do to a certain degree, um, but I also, because I do CrossFit, I tend not to. Yeah. It's like, uh, I, I get my workout done because right. there is that element of, I've got it done by, like I'm back home, showered, and I'm at my desk by 9 a.m. every yeah. morning. So it, it's done. So then I don't really think about it. But I do, you know, I'll walk, I'll walk up the stairs, I'll try to avoid the, the escalations, I'll, I'll park a little bit further away, it drives my fiance. Nuts. Well, there's a there's a parking space on the other side of the lot, <laughs> yeah. but there's one right here. Yeah, but it's, we can walk. I can park easier over there. So the truck has made me do that. I can't park where I would normally park anymore because mm -hmm. I can't. Well, I can't park it very well, and it just takes up too much room. And so I'm like, whatever. We'll just park further out. And so I'm walking more. I don't track any of that stuff because, well, like the you know there was a big thing with like heart rate variability and VO2 max, and then what is my heart rate? I'm like, ah, you know what? If we're working out and we're doing this stuff. I did, I, I did Whoop uh, for 10 months. I did, I'm just running out of my subscription now. And the, the, the thing that was <clears throat> I learned from that is I did not get enough sleep. Ooh, yeah. Uh, it's, you m need more sleep than you think you do. Oh, yeah. And, uh, what were you getting before? And what did you change to? So especially when I've got my kids and I have to get up at 6 a.m. Uh, to get Ellis off to school, um, like, I need to be in bed by nine. Like, I need eight and a half, nine, nine hours, yeah. especially for work time, in order to get back into that green zone. Um, and in order to, to, that's in bed at nine o'clock, 
having read for 30 minutes so that I'm sleepy. So really, which means I have to get my kids to bed early as well. If not, right. I, I go to bed at the same time as my daughter and she's 12. Yeah. Um, but then I, I get up earlier. So the difference I feel the following day is amazing. Because yeah. again, these workouts are, are quite tiring. And I, I have tried, I'm one of the few people that I work at in all different classes at, at, at the garage. You know, I can do the 7.30, the 8.30, yeah. the 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. No one knows when I'm going to show up. Um, and I like the, the mornings because then it gets me going. But I, I often have a nap at 1 o'clock because I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> a quick 10-minute power nap. But if I, do, if I don't do the mornings, then I don't need the power nap. But then I do the 4 or 5 o'clock. Right. Which is why I'm all over the place. But uh, sleep um, and then just understanding. And it's not a big surprise, but how much... Um, alcohol, just even one beer, a glass of wine, uh, upsets your sleep that night. Um, uh, so, and everything else was just, you know, counting steps and showing how much you worked out. But, I mean, I don't change how I'm going to work out because that's whatever CrossFit, that's, that's right. whatever the workout of the day is. That's right. And it says, well, you should do 14.8 strain like i'm gonna do whatever the workout is <laughs> that's right um, and they're making a lot of that up like we did a, a video um a funny stupid video because uh we did um we were biking for calories but we were also looking at the, the miles we biked and we found that the miles and the calories were different and so i'm like well you know they're just making up calories because it's it's a it's a sort of equation that they can't get all the answers to mm -hmm. so we reverse mathed it and we're like they're basically guessing your weight and that's what it comes down to. We're like, ah, the average person is 70 kilograms, so it's like, uh, like 140 pounds or something, right? So if you're over 140 pounds, you're breaking their numbers, so it's probably better for you. And if you're under 140 pounds, then you're not generating as much power as they think you should, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, so it's all askewed. So it's, it's never what you think it is, but when they give you that CrossFit workout, whatever, just go in there and, and, and do what you can. So measuring is cool because it gives you something to track. Now, I think the thing that you did that was awesome is if I have a whoop or any device and I have this data point and then I use it for something like I get all this information like I see the guys wearing that um, the continuous glucose monitor like what are you gonna do with it nothing I'm like okay well that's dumb I, I do something with it I think, yeah. change your sleep habits yeah it's, it's help, it helps you understand the things that change in your sleep patterns or, or whatever so now that I understand that um, I'm not gonna sign up for it you know I, I, again, um, I mean, it, there was a certain element of it held me a little bit more accountable for, right. uh, you know, when I should go to bed. But now I just, it's just well, that's disappoint. the thing is you took the data and you learned from it. Yep. And then you're uh, basically an adult who says I should probably go to bed early. So I have found the exact same thing. So <clears throat> there was a time in my life where I was staying up till 1 a.m. and I'd still get up at like 6 a.m. No problem. And I would tuck everybody in. And then I'm the last person to go to bed, lock all the doors, last, you know, dogs go out to the bathroom and everything. I was that guy. <laughs> and at like 42, something happened. <laughs> and, and so I, the other day, Evie's, Evie's a freshman. And she's like, you know, you don't tuck me in anymore. I'm like, well, because I think I go to bed first out of everybody. So by like 9.30, I'm already in bed, like yep. cruising off. But I need it. And my litmus test for am I getting enough sleep is basically, do I fall asleep at stoplights? Yep. Like, am I getting tired or getting, like, you know, that sleepy nod? Something's wrong. That shouldn't be the case. Correct. And, and what I have found, um, well, caffeine may be the reason my testosterone has gone up. We'll find out. I'm doing an experiment now. Uh, caffeine doesn't have the same effect on me. So I can drink, like, coffee to stay awake. But it doesn't wake me up. So, like, I can literally drink a cup of coffee and go right to bed. Oh, I'm the same. So, doing it, like, trying to drink coffee in the middle of the day to, like, get a perk didn't do anything for me. There is a, um, there's a podcast, Diary of the CEO, and there's the head, there's the, there's the lady that's on that that's the head analyst for Whoop. And I should look it up. I wish I could remember her name, but look up Diary of the CEO and, and Whoop. And, yeah. and, um, she talks about all the data that, that they gather, the anonymous data that they get from all of the, the wood bracelets. And, you know, again, she's, she's absolutely adamant. Sleep is the number one thing that will drive your longevity. Yeah. Uh, consistency of sleep, always go to bed at the same time, try and get up at the same time. The thing that was horrifying was um, when they talk about shift workers, which oh, were yeah. people that are uh, awake between two and four, four in the morning. She said, on average, on average, it's a 15-year reduction in lifespan. And shift workers are classed as 
I think only 25 days of the year that they are awake between two and four in the morning. Wow. Like it's so incredibly bad for you to work. And when you think of first responders and all the people actually doing that for our benefit, it's a big sacrifice they're making. But listen to that podcast. It was really yeah. interesting uh, in her journey and how she uses all that data. And again, it's reaffirmed. Again, when you get older and you're trying to live a better life, reliable sleep patterns is an absolute game changer. Yeah. So I did a uh, podcast, 18-ish ways <laughs> to get a better night's <laughs> sleep. And it really, I mean, I am a firm believer of it. It, it comes, uh, I've had a conversation with several people in the gym, like, like they're like, when they talk about consistency, and there's a podcast about consistency. And probably the biggest thing is, um, for consistency in the gym, come in the morning. Well, I can't because I didn't sleep well. I'm like, okay, yeah, do you see how these a, are compounded? It's a chicken and the egg thing. Yeah, so the, the easiest way to fix your sleep, so guys, you can jot it down right here. The easiest way that you can fix your sleep, wake up at 5 a.m., do not take a nap, do not go to bed until 11 p.m. When you go to bed, wake up at 5 a.m. You know what you're going to be? Tired. Yeah. And then <laughs> don't go to bed until 11 p.m. The next day, wake up at 5 a.m., and you're, you're going to be set. And then go to bed whenever you need to, but wake up at 5 a.m. Yeah. You It'll do, change everything. Yeah, you need to reset your, your, uh, sort of your own body clock around that. And now I get to the stage where I, I'm excited about going to bed. Oh, me too. I mean, it's just that I'm so looking forward to <laughs> going to tired. bed tonight already. <laughs> yeah. And it's a weird thing. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. If you guys, I, I would say probably the first thing I would, I, I would fix is let's talk about your sleep. Next is let's talk about what you're eating. The next is let's talk about your sweat. Because people literally have lived their whole lives without really ever working out. Yes, it is great for you. You should do it. People have gone a pretty long time eating crappy. But if you don't sleep, I think you have two weeks. If you don't sleep, you're dead. Yeah, it really, <laughs> so, catch, it really catches up with it you. It does. Exactly. It'll turn you old fast. It'll ruin things. It'll ruin stuff in your system. Mental health is a big issue with it as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, do you know uh, Jamie Thomas? Yeah, yeah. She has a uh, uh, counseling business. Um, her focus is trauma, but this whole idea of like your brain and your body and understanding it, man, she, she is, we have a, we play D&D together. And so on those nights, we, I, I'll throw out questions to either her for like self-help or, or to Jordan because he's a vet. I'm like, I got this huge great Pyrenees. He's like, yeah, don't cut their toenails because they have, <laughs> their veins are too long or whatever. I'm like, okay, I did do that. And it did bleed a while and I was freaking out. Um, okay, so you, you had actually said a couple of things. I wrote down some notes, so I'm going to um, hit a few things. Uh, so we had talked one time uh, last week, as well as you just mentioned it, but in CrossFit, when there's a program, or when the workout is programmed, the person writing it has an intended stimulus. So sometimes, like today, it was uh, double unders and heavy power cleans. But what they, the behind-the-scenes thing is, he's like, I'd like you to do this workout in, in eight to, or six to eight minutes. <laughs> We're like, okay, dang, the weight's too heavy. I can't do that. So I'm going to drop the weight down. Mm -hmm. Now you may think, okay, I still can't do it. Okay, let's shave off a few reps. If you want to pre 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 preserve the stimulus of a six to eight minute workout, because that fast workout, a seven minute workout, let's call it, is way different than a 30 minute workout. Yeah, yeah and, and there's an element of, this is why I don't, I don't want to sound cultish, but there is the, this, I don't want to call it science, but there's a, the theory behind you've got to trust CrossFit. Yes. You've got to tr trust the programming. And certainly... When, or the methodology. The, the methodology behind Which is, it. it's weird. It doesn't make sense if you don't know it. Like, wait, I'm not going to go jog for four hours? Well, I'm it, not going to do back by chest and try? Well, exactly. You're not going to you know, work at the gym for two and a half hours. I, I remember when I was a, was a kid, you know, you'd see the in, in magazines, paper magazines back in the day when they had them. There was this <laughs> weird contraption exercise machine that promised fitness for 14 minutes a day. And it looked like an elliptical with some you know, strength elements on it. And it cost 3,000 pounds or dollars, whatever. And I never thought, that doesn't make sense. You can't work out for 14, hours, 14 minutes a day right. and get fit. And I'm at CrossFit where, yeah, you, pre you actually can. So there are some things they're doing to tweak it. So it's, a, it's constantly very functional movements executed at high intensity. The high intensity is a tough part. You can't jam it every day. Today I felt like I did pretty good on like, I was, you and I are both out of breath looking at each other like, let's not talk yet. <laughs> let's wait. That's great. I can't do that every day. And I think that's okay. Yeah. But um, they have found some of the secrets of combining these movements. So it's typically couplets and triplets. So couplet is like uh, running and deadlift. Trippet is running, deadlift, and pull-ups, right? So three movements. And there's a weird, um, huge effectiveness of having weight 
on you and going below parallel. So basically entering into a really effective squat with weight. Mm. I don't know what it is, but the, um, the, the, I don't know, it's like sleep. The effect of that, and if you watch what we do, we're doing a lot of weight below parallel. Well, when you think of, think of all the muscles that that uses. Mm. It's your legs, all your legs, your core, right. your we're shoulders. We're no longer isolating. We're like, every day is an every day. Okay. You do everything. Whatever, whatever the program does, that's what I'm doing. It's not like you're going to the gym and just working on biceps and then right. not, use, not doing anything else. But that's what we used to do. Yeah. It was, I would do bicep burnout curls. Which is funny, it's the only thing in CrossFit that you never ever do target no, is we just biceps. Have, yeah. Because when you think about real world functional fitness, how, how often do you do something that just requires your biceps? When you lift a beer. <laughs> Look at enough. my bicep. <laughs> my coffee. You're using your shoulder, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so everything is like roped in together. Okay, so the another one you'd said, and I love, oh, we actually talked about this one already, the uh, push from um, um, competition. Uh, drop the bar. Oh, you'll like this one. <clears throat> so we did, both of us turned 50. And I was talking to the girls the other day. I was like, oh, I was at lunch with uh, Alan, and I'd come back to, like, I don't know, clean the bathroom or whatever, and everyone was there. And um, I said something about us being 50. And they're like, no, I think he just turned 40. <laughs> so, yeah, look at you. Look at you, right? Oh, shucks. Yeah, aw. Um, I was like, no, I'm pretty sure he's 50. So they actually looked it up, and they're like, oh, you're right. I'm like, it's not often that I'm right, but we were – he literally just said it, so I can't be wrong unless he was just no, making I, me feel good. I, 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 I mean, when people, I do like when people guess my age. I'm quite lucky in that regard, but I don't look like, and neither do you. Thank uh, you, man. Look, but it's look, not. Look like so my brother just started at the gym, and they're like, "Oh, I just met your younger brother." I'm like, "Damn it, he's a year older than me." <laughs> so they're always like, I'm "Like, I got wrinkles in, in a gray, and he does not have any of those." I'm like, Whatever. I, I, at least you have hair. <laughs> it's true. It either turns gray or turns loose. Mine has turned super gray. Um, so the other one was a morning workout. I think. Uh, I couldn't do this. Right now, I'm working out at 4 p.m. because Evie, well, sometimes, because Evie wants to work out. And so I pick her up from school and we go mm -hmm. to the gym. Totally fine. So it's force ranking the things in my life that are important. Sleep is big. Family is big. Working out is big. But if I can take my family and put them into working out, yeah, I'll massage sure. my day and move it around. But pe people out there, if you're listening, like, I just can't work out. Try the morning. Make it the first thing you do because then it's done. It's, it's done. And it really does kick you off for the rest of the day. Uh, it helps with my mood. If I don't work out, I never really get my, my mood going for, for, the, for the whole day. Unless you drink enough coffee. Uh, yeah, but it, <laughs> right. even still, it's, it, it's, you, you, get, you, you do get your endorphins going when you have a good workout and you're lying there sweating on the ground. Um, it, it's, it does feel good. But you, you, you've got to, there's an element of you need to trust and believe the process. I know that sounds, again, cultish, but if you, if you trust the process, then you don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about it. I go in at 7.30. Whatever the workout is, I know it'll be good for me. Right. I know that because of the programming, when I go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the balancing of all the different workouts we have day after day is, is appropriate. Right. So I'm not going to be overworking the same thing time and time again. I don't have to think about what I have to work out. It's all done for me. Right. And that's uh, actually a beautiful, beautiful thing of a well-thought-out program. It's going to work for pretty much everybody. Now, I will say this on the flip side. We add in stuff. Because not everybody comes five or so days a week. If you, like, I'll come five days a week, which means I typically skip the extra bit. Mm -hmm. But if you only came in like sporadically, you may hit heavy day every single time, which is not great. We don't want you to just have heavy day. Or you may hit, I just did body weight every single time I came in. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, so we do add in some things for people. Like, but just be, so I think what I usually tell people is be aware of your body. So um, a brother's a great example. He... <clears throat> Because we know each other, it's like proximity bias, right? I, I am not the owner of the gym. I'm just his brother, Andy, right? And so he'll ask questions that people won't typically ask me, right? And so like my buddy Cam, who just started into CrossFit, well, he texted me one day. He's a year into CrossFit, right? And so uh, sometime in that first year, he texted me and he's like, hey, when is it allowed for newbies to use chalk? I'm like, anytime. You chalk anything. What are you talking about? He's like, oh, it's not a thing? I'm like, no, just chalk whatever you need to chalk, right? Wear a belt if you want to wear a belt. So my brother will ask me questions, and I'm like, oh, that's fascinating. I, he's like, when it says uh, three by five, what exactly are you meaning? I'm like, that, I mean, he didn't ask that, but like, fascinating, uh, right? So um, ask the questions. Uh, the coach is there to help you. Ask your friend. Ask your neighbor. I mean, you've been here long enough. Yep. You'll tell people whatever it is. Like, And sometimes... We will use words that don't make sense. Like, hey, we're doing a hang power snatch. We're like, wait, that's what? too yeah. many words. What did that mean? Yeah, you just asked somebody. Um, so the other thing I want to kind of get into, I know we need to wrap this up in a little bit, but the other thing I want to get into is, um, yes, CrossFit can get you healthy and fit. Yes, eating well can get you healthy and fit. If you ever want to shortcut the process, 
get yourself a mentor. So I tell people this all the time. I have a, I have a mentor as well um, for the business because I'm an electrical engineer and I suck at what I do. Not engineering, but business. So I, I hired somebody to tell me, stop being an idiot. Like, don't, don't do this and do that. So you've hired yourself a mentor. Yeah, so, so at, at 50, um, I was in a, a, a job that I wasn't really going anywhere. So you know, I know I've got at least another 15 years in my career. And I know where I want to retire. I would like to, my last job, I'd like to be a CTO or a chief product officer uh, for a small to medium sized software company. Um, you know, ideally retiring where I'd be invited to join boards because of the experience I have. Yeah. So how do I get there? And so I Ask somebody that does it for a living. Yeah. So it's so placing. Yeah. That's so beautiful. So it's not about getting my next job. It's about putting, putting together the plan of being visible in with LinkedIn or in a community where you're asked to do these jobs. Right. Um, because typically they won't advertise them. They, they will do through referrals, right. they will do through connections. And so working with a, a mentor, an executive uh, coach to help me identify um, you know, my ideal company profiles, um, you know, who's a good fit for me, right. who should I connect with, um, so that long-term uh, you get, plan yeah. to, to, to get to where I want to be, not tomorrow, but in 5, 10, 15 years' time. And so the crazy thing about mentors is, it's, it's not crazy, it makes sense, but it's, it's kind of hard to like, like really put into practice. Like, like here in the gym, uh, I was helping somebody, oh man, who was it? I don't know. Timmy and Tina, I don't remember who it was. So I'm helping Timmy and Tina, and we're doing maybe a clean and jerk. And their second lift, I'm like, hey, so you really need to drop under the bar. And they're like, you only saw two lifts. How do you know? Because I've seen thousands of lifts, and I can already tell what you're doing. I don't yeah. need like an hour to watch you. I, can, I, I already know. I, I probably could have told you that to begin with because pretty much everyone has the same problems. So these mentors, or whatever they are, this is their specialty. This is what they do. Your mentor works daily to do exactly what you're going to do one time. For you, N equals one. I just want this to happen to me one time because I have one life. For her, N equals a thousand. Just the conversation I have with, with her, I learn so much. Yes. And to her, it's just a conversation. And every day, to me, it's huge insights into what I should be doing. Yes. So it's a no-brainer for her, but it's incredibly valuable for me. Yeah. And so whether that's you know uh, coaches for finances, for work, for fitness, for whatever... Just speak to somebody that has lots of experience of the thing you want to do. Yeah. You will learn so much. Yeah. And so I, I would go two steps further on that. One, pay them full price. <laughs> they have wisdom and they're going to shortcut your process. Pay for it. If you can solve a problem with money, it's not a problem. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The, the, the other is um, uh, take their advice. Take the one thing that really flows to the top and actually get it done. Because that one thing to them is going to be like, oh, that's what, here's five things. Just take one. That one step is going to be so massive. Like uh, Levi for his birthday, he's like, I would like, um, Levi's about to turn 18. He's um, wanting to be a, a big dude, so he's eating a lot and just lifting. And uh, <clears throat> he got sick and lost a couple pounds. He's like, dang it, all this hard work. I'm like, just keep eating. A lot of protein. But uh, he's like, I want a heavy bag. I'm like, why? He's like, you know, you know, work it out and punch it. I'm like, okay, here's what I know. I know nothing about boxing and heavy bags, but what I remember from a kid is my wrists hurt every time I try to use a heavy bag. So I said, how about this? Let's find a boxing place, and there's a couple around here. Let's go in for some one-on-one -on -one personal training, or two-on-one. -on -one. Yep. Learn something about boxing. Ask them a lot of questions about bags, and maybe we'll end up buying a bag that makes more sense, or we'll just use them, yep. right? And then he's like, I also want to do jujitsu. I'm like, all right, I'm happy to do that with you because that's fascinating to me. I know nothing about it. I wrestle, but that's like the opposite. Like give people, in wrestling, you always roll over to your stomach, which gives you your neck, which means you're going to get rear neck and choked. Yep. So it's not a good mix up. I said, instead of just going and jumping in class, let's find one that seems to make sense and hire them for some one-on-ones or yep. one-on-twos because the interaction you're going to get, he's going to tell us things that are just for us that are no-brainers that are going to, you know. Really click. Yes. Very quickly. And it's just us. So yeah, anyway, guys, I guess what I want to say is um, I find it interesting that it takes us 50 years, both me and you find mentors now. We could have shortcut this process <laughs> so long ago. Had we talked to somebody like, hey, help me roadmap my career path. Well, it, it, I, I, I agree to a certain degree. One of the things I struggled with is when I was younger, uh, you know, working, 
my bosses, my managers, the people I worked with knew their shit. Like they were so much better than me. So my mentors were my managers. Yeah. Like I learned so much from them. And then there's a point when the people I worked for didn't know any more than me. Like I didn't get value from them. And then you need to go hunt for them. So I do think when you're younger, you can get a lot of that mentorship from your elders, genuinely your elders, your uncles, your Those that managers. have done before. Those have done before because there's way more of them. But once you get older, there's fewer people that know more about a subject than, than you do. Yes. So that's when I think you have to go find them. Yeah. And I think people, I should have done it 10 years ago, but 30 years ago, I didn't need to get a mentor because it, my boss knew shit tons of stuff. Right. Um, and plus, there's a thing about guys, I don't need help. Man, I'm telling you, yeah, pay somebody, they're going to tell you something. Even if you just have an hour conversation with them, you're going to learn so yeah, much. Yeah, get over that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, if you feel stuck in any part of your life, go and speak to someone, go find a mentor, go pay for their advice. Yeah. You will get a lot of value out of it. Yeah, so I was, uh, I, I'm going to, one more story, then I'm going to go into some questions here. So uh, on the mentoring, um, I'm really into Bitcoin and the Lightning Network, mm-hmm. which if you know what it is, great. If you don't, just think of Bitcoin as like dollars and the Lightning Network is your credit cards. Not really, but it's kind of. Yeah. And I wanted to become a, basically a credit card processor, a Lightning node. How do I do that? And so there was a guy on a show I listened to, the Survival Podcast. He is a um, consultant to help people do this. I was like, whatever. I mean, if I can hire him for just me. And he's like, yeah, I'll do that. And so it, it took us a week to get me up and running. Whereas if I did it on my own, it would have been a year, yeah. right? So yes, I paid him. And I shortcut the process by like 52 weeks. Complete investment. Right. Absolute investment. It was huge. Um, okay, so we're going to hit you with some uh, normal questions I ask everybody. Um, if you think they're uh, too intimate or scary, I'll, you can always just say pass. Okay. All right. So um, we already kind of did this one, but what was your first job? Uh, I was a uh, help desk analyst for a software company. Did you do anything before that? Like I bagged groceries? Oh, I worked at Burger King. There you go. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, Burger King in England or Scotland? Scotland? Absolutely. Loved that job. It was a lot of fun. So... Um, I'm going to tangent here. I went to England, and um, I probably can't say this. Well, it's my podcast, so whatever. Just don't listen if you don't like these words. But um, So we're in England. We go to uh, downtown Lincoln, mm-hmm. and they're like, hey, they just put in a Burger King. Let's go to Burger King. Of course, I'm like, why? I could eat there anytime. So <clears throat> they, don't, they have a sandwich called the BK Broiler, but over there, I guess they don't use the word broiler. They're, they use the word flamer. And so <laughs> the place is packed. Flame grilled, yeah. Yes, it's right. And so the place is packed, and there's a guy calling out orders. So it wasn't, I mean, this is like in the 90s, and so it's not like, I'll just pop it up on your iPhone. There wasn't an iPhone. We had flip phones, and they just yell stuff. It's like no PAs or whatever. They're just yelling it. So this kid's yelling out, um, who's the, the, the Big Mac and large fries, right? He's yelling it out like, this is your order. Who's the, right? So he's like, <laughs> he yells out while we're standing there waiting for our food, who's the flamer in a large yep. Diet Coke? Yep. And of course, I start laughing. And her dad, Michael, looks at me and he's like, what? What's funny? I'm like, well, he, I'm like, crap. I'm like making my, I'm looking like a total idiot. He's like, oh, I get it. You're American. Yeah, and some so, things don't translate. <laughs> right. I was like, son of a. Okay. So um, I think everybody should have those type of jobs. So they realize. Everyone should. I don't want to have that type of job. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, but uh, you, not a lot of money. So no. it helps you figure out a decent job. What is something your parents or grandparents taught you that you find pretty valuable now? Uh oh, stump the band. Wow. How to wear a kilt. <laughs> oh, uh, ironing. I can, I'm really good at ironing shirts. Ooh. I have tried to never buy a shirt that needs ironing. Uh, but you, a, a guy that's got a, a, a shirt on, a, just a crisp shirt, looks fantastic. Heavy starch? Light starch. Light yeah, starch? On the, on the collar. There you go. All right, nice. Um, so we did a whole bunch of fitness. Um, um, ooh, how, how about this? What is something that's been a, uh, a high or a buffalo? Something high, low buffalo? You know that thing? So you're just like a high for CrossFit or a buffalo, like something I didn't know that has happened that has been pretty cool. Like I got a muscle but I never knew I could. Or what's been a highlight for your journey in CrossFit so far? I mean, the classic is the bar muscle up. You do feel quite good when you figure that out. Yeah. Uh, the first one you do, you're like, oh, wow, I just, I, I made it up. 
I did, I did, you know, there's so many of the chicken wings getting up there, and then I had this really smooth one, and thankfully there was people, it's like, rah, rah, rah. you see that a lot. Like, it, it just, did they capture it on video? Uh, I think they, they got my second one was on video. Okay. And it's, 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 it's one thing that's completely stupid. I mean, who cares? It is. Who, who does that? Right. Who cares that you can do a bar But it is up? cool. But, you know, everyone that tries, it's like, yeah, it's that feeling of accomplishment of, of doing something that um, you never thought you could do before. The that's other, the, super high gymnastics, so it's really tough to put that coordination together, especially yeah. when we've never done yeah, I mean, and the other one is rope climbs. I, I do enjoy doing those. It's pretty cool. It's the, um, it's, it is fun to see someone when they get that first like pull, they're like, hey, my foot actually stayed in place. This was awesome. I could actually stand on it and hold the rope. You're like, yes. Because it's, it's down to a confidence thing as well. That's why, why it's good. Not the, the thing itself, but the fact that you have confidence to do something like that. That's very true. So um, if you had that billboard right there that everybody could see as they drive back and forth on 92, what message would you put out to the world? It doesn't have to be CrossFit. It could be any message, like a motto for your life. What would you put out there? Um, I mean, I, I really do think the, something about the importance of sleep. I mean, I, I think it is just so healthy for people, both physically and mentally, to think of sleep as much as you think about working out and what you put in your body. And I think that's the thing. It's not thought of at the same level of importance no. as um, working out and eating, but it's so critical for your health, it is, physical I, and mental. Amen to that. The, the, nobody has ever come into the gym and said, I need better sleep. But you know what I can almost tell? Everybody I, needs better sleep. Yeah. So maybe the message on the billboard would be like, get sleep. Not right now because you're driving. Yes. <laughs> so, so instead of that, get milk, get sleep. Right. With a little star, but not right now. Make sure you're still awake. Um, so you already mentioned one podcast, but any books or podcasts that you really enjoy or you listen to right now? I've only started getting into uh, podcasts. Um, I'm trying to... I, I, I've, I've scrolled too much on Insta and Facebook, um, like just the crap that's on there. So I'm trying to listen to more educational um, podcasts um, they really just stimulate my, my mind a little bit more so one thing I do first thing in the morning to get me going is Wordle and Connections and Scrabble with Friends it's like trying to get my brain going oh I do the um, same thing so that like, I feel ready for the rest of the day because if you spend too much scrolling on Insta you just dumbs your, you get immediate brain right. fog so um, I try to find even if you disagree with them and sometimes it's good to watch things that you disagree with because that is life. Um, but you'll learn something. And I think it just gets your neurons going a little bit. Yeah. Well, I have found that I can do as many chores as my wife or family want me to do if I have a podcast in. Yeah. I mean, just I'll listen and vacuum the entire house and mow the lawn and whatever. But it, it, for me, it's um, like you said, it gives you an education. It gives you something to think on. It's for, like I listen to probably 10 different other gyms, podcasts, to see what they're saying and understand their style. And some things I'm like, I would never do or say that. And other times like, I'm totally stealing that. That was great. I, I think coming back to the health thing, it's, it's um, a mental workout. Yeah. I mean, we've talked a lot about physical workouts, but it's a mental workout to listen to something educational that you have to think about. How often do you think like, of something new or creative as opposed to just you know, cranking out a job? So, right. Well, uh, that's why you do like a Wordle. Like, I got to yep. come up with the words. Like, there's another thing called a cryptogram. You ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. I should buy you one. So it's basically like a, a secret message. So they take the alphabet, and then you change the letters, and then they do a quote. Like, uh, four score and seven year ago, right? But all the letters are... Are like, jumbled up. Like, A equals B, or whatever, right? And then you have to undo. You have to figure out the you mystery. To, you have to decrypt the, yeah. the message. It's, it's super fun. It's annoying until you get the first couple letters, mm -hmm. and you're like... But it really, or just a Sudoku puzzle, it makes your brain, like, like think. I mean, my, my mother at 76 <clears throat> does the hardest Sudokus, and I think it's still one of the reasons that she's quite mentally clear. Yeah. Uh, is that she uses, she does that every day, and it really helps that mental workout. You should yeah. think about mental workouts every day. So there you go, guys. Th that's it. Here at CrossFit Garage, we want you to be mentally tough mm -hmm. and to sleep a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. It's a, we're approaching an hour. Thank you for your time, guys. This is Alan Lindsay, super awesome guy in the gym at all times and classes. So if you hear someone with a Scottish accent, he is not from Texas, but he will nope. take you to a Spartan race. Absolutely. Come on, there's one uh, March. Uh, I'm doing the trifecta. I'm doing all three in, in one, one weekend. day. In okay. one weekend. So we'll do the what? sprint and the super one day and the beast in the next day. Where is it at? Uh, it's down by uh, Conyers, the, oh, the so it's international close. horse. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I know you flew out to Arizona to do one. 
uh, did went down to Texas. That was uh, Dave, David that did. Oh, that's right. He but did. I then also went up to Nashville last year. Did two up there. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. All right, cool guys. We will post the next one so that we can all follow you. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> all right, thanks very much. Thank, guys, so much, you guys take care. Again, trying to help you build a firm foundation in fitness, food, and finances. We're down here in Woodstock, Georgia, CrossFit Garage. Yeah. <laughs>